Subscribe if you want to raid, but you're always missing a sixth person. Hey, I'm Friendly, and today we're prioritizing which helm weapons to chase, because everything in the helm, like the weapon foundry, umbrals, the seasonal vendors, and their deep side weapons, they're all going to be going away once the season ends and Lightfall begins. However, from now until Lightfall releases, you can pick up daily red box deep side weapons from any of these seasonal vendors. Don't forget about the Weapon Foundry umbrals. As a reminder, these are simply ideas and my opinions and they're intended for anyone getting back into the game after a long hiatus or they're prepping for a new expansion and they don't have the time to grind raids and dungeons. Quick rundown about the daily deep side red box weapons. The word daily, it means you can grab one deep side weapon from each seasonal vendor each day. So you can pick up one from Season of Risen, one from Haunted, one from Plunder, and so on and so forth. Theoretically, if you have enough Umbral Engrams and the appropriate Umbral Energy and you log in daily, you could be completing four different weapon patterns every five days. Now I've broken this down into sections like PvE, PvP, and then some honorable mentions, so let's get into it. Let's talk PvE priorities and use weapon type as our framework. SMGs. The Eyeclos SMG from the Season of the Seraph. It's a very versatile SMG, one of the best weapons in the game. It has perks that complement each other for both PvP and PvE. It's an aggressive frame, so your hitting adds much, much harder. If you're an insanely active player, craft it with Frenzy and synergize it with either Threat Detector or Perpetual Motion to boost weapon stats during combat. Remember, Frenzy is a free 15% damage boost for just being in combat, so it's helpful if you're not interested in build crafting or relying on Charge with Light mods. The only caveat here is the mod system with Charge with Light mods is being overhauled in Lightfall, so you might consider picking up Jolt Shot instead if you like build crafting. The Callus Mini Tool. Pick this one up at the Crown of Sorrow from the Season of the Haunted. Now this is a lightweight SMG, you're able to be super aggressive, you move faster with the lightweight frame, and it's suitable for someone who's always deep in the trenches. If you're a solar build crafter, go with this SMG for incandescence. If you're extremely aggressive, go with enhanced surrounded with enhanced threat detector or even unrelenting. You really can't go wrong with either of these SMGs. Bows. You only have two bows here to worry about, the under your skin and the tripwire bow. Under your skin can be found at the front of the helm where the Season of the Risen content is and the tripwire is found at the Rasputin and Clovis seasonal vendor. Bows are very handy for champions, especially with explosive head and when you craft it with the fastest draw time speeds. It doesn't really matter which bow you go for, I just recommend grabbing at least one of these. For end game purposes however, go for explosive head on either bow or go for adaptive munition for under your skin. The extra payload explosion from Explosive Head, it acts like an extra tick damage to help stun champions, especially overloads. Adaptive Munitions is very interesting because in Lightfall, Match Game is being reworked and it's being removed from endgame activities, and you won't need to force yourself to match the shield element. Grenade Launchers Explosive Personality, you can pick this one up at the Season of the Risen at the front of the helm. This is a wave frame grenade launcher, very easy to use, you just aim at the floor, there's no real need to aim, S tier add clear capability, and it hits hard in end game content too. You have auto holding loadster as your best friend here, and you can't go wrong with the last column either, with unrelenting or disruption break. And seriously, one for all can easily proc, because you're usually shooting into a mob of enemies. Rocket launchers. Bump in the night. Pick this one up at the Crown of Sorrow. It's an aggressive frame rocket launcher. There's no need to farm Master Vault of Glass for Heezen's Vengeance. This one comes with auto holding loadster, Vorpal, Chill Clip, Impact Casing, and even Demolitionist for you Solar Warlocks. So if you don't feel comfortable with linear fusion rifles or aiming or experiencing flinch, pick up this rocket launcher instead. Some nice to haves, but probably not the end of the world if you don't have them. Any Trace Rifle. You can grab Hollow Denial over at the Crown of Sorrow or the Arc Trace Rifle at Rasputin slash Clovis. Trace Rifles have been slowly getting buffed over time, Bungie clearly wants us to use them, so for Void Build Crafters, pick up Hollow Denial which has Repulsor Brace. For laser spamming and general gameplay, go with the Path of Least Resistance. Perks that really stand out for this Seraph Trace Rifle are One for All, Jolt Shot, and I'm looking at Gut Shot because you can basically spray and pray everywhere. Trace Rifles in general provide that large mag, so you can feel like you're using a primary weapon. Now the other nice to have is a machine gun, the Retrofit Escapade from Rasputin slash Clovis. Machine guns are getting a confirmed 10% damage boost in both PvE and PvP in Lightfall, so it's nice to have one handy in case it really is a machine gun meta, but I probably wouldn't prioritize going out and leveling it up right now. PvP, Ostringer, a very competitive 140 hand cannon. 
S tier dueling and range perks, classic Eye of the Storm plus rangefinder, or swap it out for opening shot if you don't like high zoom. Your choice of ricochet or high cal rounds, but I would avoid full bore here. Consider small bore or even corkscrew because you don't want to lose that stability. This is a really solid option because you don't have to grind a dungeon like you do Eyes Luna or go play comp like you do Rose. Beloved. Beloved has a really clean scope, one of the cleanest scopes, literally nothing but the red dot to obscure vision. Classic quick draw snapshot combination, 40 zoom sniper, or min max your aim assist with firmly planted and moving target. Don't miss out on this classic sniper rifle. Disparity. Pulse rifles were hit with a nerf recently, but they are still a great option. It sports enhanced rapid hit, plus your choice of Headseeker, Kill Clip, or Desperado. And remember, Headseeker was also reworked so you can refresh the timer with non precision shots. Iclus SMG. You can easily go max range with this, full bore, Acarized rounds, or Seraph rounds, but Seraph rounds was recently changed. Dynamic Sway, you have Perpetual Motion, Killing Wind, Rangefinder, Tap the Trigger, all S tier perks. There are other weapons in the helm, but some have perks that have either been deprecated, nerfed, or been overtaken by better options, and they just aren't exactly worth the short amount of time right now. Honorable mentions. Thoughtless. This comes with firing line and you can choose overflow, and it would be great if Bungie decides to buff snipers again. This is a really good option if you don't want to be grinding deep zone crypt for the succession sniper rifle. Brigand's Law. A very, very solid sidearm with both PvP and PvE perks. Lastly, we have weapons that you can farm from the Weapon Foundry umbrals. For the Vice Weapon Foundry, try keeping a funnel web that has Frenzy or Rangefinder. For Omelon weapons, you can't go wrong with any of them. Try to get Typhons, it's a heavy GL, and heavy GLs are getting a big buff in Lightfall. Chase after Choke Clip or Explosive Light and Demolitionist. The Snorri is a very powerful PvP fusion rifle to chase, aim for firmly planted and high impact reserves. New Arvandel fusion rifle can even roll with Reconstruction and Choke Clip. The Suros Weapon Foundry. I would recommend keeping any cantata that has high range and has rangefinder, eye of the storm, opening shot, or moving target. And lastly, the new Fiori Tour 59 sidearm. This can roll with Repulsor Brace for anyone who's void build crafting. A lot of people find they need a break from this game, so I hope this prioritization breakdown helped anyone who has been away or they're coming back and preparing for the new Lightfall expansion. Comment below if it did help you or even comment how it didn't. I'm curious what other weapons you and your friends are chasing before Lightfall because it'll be here before you know it. Eyes up Guardian, I'll see you in the next one.